Returning to school during the pandemic when the Delta variant is a concern, everything is considered. The vaccinated, the unvaccinated, wearing a mask, not wearing a mask, at least six feet apart or not. And what about the idea of surveillance testing for COVID-19 infections? The CDC has recommended that mitigate one of the mitigation strategies is screening testing. We need better data. We need more data to say, is that true? Do we really need to go this le- this to this length of adding another layer of mitigation? To find out, pediatric infectious diseases expert Dr. Jason Newland with Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis is the principal investigator for the Safe Return to School project. Evaluating um, whether or not weekly screening testing is needed in middle and high schools to prevent COVID-19 transmission. Whether that is needed in all these schools all the time is not known. Um, And I think that's what we want to do. We want to try to provide the scientific evidence that if you do weekly screening testing, does it or does it not reduce or or make it really make COVID-19 transmission extremely low in our schools? Funded by the National Institutes of Health, the study is focused on some school districts in St. Louis County, north of Del Mar Boulevard. The study refers to it as the Del Mar Divide. Project description from the National Institutes of Health was to do uh, an underserved population, and we wanted to really focus in on um, our predominantly African-American school districts as we wanted to understand and provide you know, more access to testing to these areas. In an area heavily impacted by COVID-19, there are five participating school districts. Pattonville, University City, Jennings, Normandy, and Ferguson, Florissant. Providing access to COVID-19 testing for symptomatic individuals is also an important part of what the overall project offers. So students, staff, and their families of all schools in those districts are provided access to drive-through COVID-19 testing six days a week. But the primary study focus will be on 16 participating middle schools and high schools by examining another level of testing, weekly surveillance testing for COVID-19. Of the 16 schools, eight of them are selected for weekly screenings for asymptomatic infections. This way, Dr. Newland will be able to compare the eight schools with weekly screenings to the eight schools that did not have the screenings offered. And we will follow any transmission that's occurring in the school and we'll be looking for transmission in all the schools to help see if there's one testing strategy, if that testing strategy is better. In the randomly selected eight schools, students and staff and their household members are asked to enroll to be tested weekly for asymptomatic COVID-19 infections during the entire 2021-22 school year. It's voluntary, so there's a consent process. That's taking a lot of time. We're doing that currently. The study is not using the nasal swabs. It's all saliva testing for the weekly surveillance screenings and for all the testing of symptomatic individuals in the five participating school districts. And it's really a simple thing for people to do. They essentially have the tube, they unscrew this cap, they place this funnel on, and now you have a a test with a funnel that has a flat end. The flat end goes against your lip. And what I tell people is think of your favorite food. Um, They can't eat or drink 30 minutes before, and then they only have to get really less than 0.5 milliliters, which is the first line. So not a lot of saliva is necessary to do this testing. The saliva testing was developed in this research lab at Washington University School of Medicine. The saliva samples are then processed in the WashU lab. And it has emergency use authorization. It's authorized by the FDA to be used. And we want we want to do saliva based because we have heard from our community that, you know, one barrier is thinking that you're going to have something stuck up your nose all the time. The test is as accurate as the, we would say, the swab that does the brain tickler. Um, and we have seen that throughout in our lab, laboratorians and the experts that we've been working with. Still, Newland knows enrolling study participants and maintaining them every week, all year, has challenges. One of the things we've learned already is the reason why people get want to be tested and the reason why they want to get vaccinated is because they want to protect their families. It might not add any additional prevention of transmission. Now, in theory, it makes sense that adding testing weekly, you're going to find more people before they potentially infect others. That makes complete sense. So I think it 
makes sense to be a strategy that we have been that people have been advocating for. I just want to see the science and because I I think it I know it's difficult to set up testing programs as we've done this now and it's super hard. And I also think that people don't necessarily want to be tested all the time for so many reasons. So I think there is a lot of things that we're going to learn in this project. I'm not sure you we need to add on weekly screening testing school wide to prevent COVID-19 transmission, but there might be certain groups within the school that it, it is necessary because it does eliminate potential outbreaks of COVID-19. Such groups could be athletic teams or it could be extracurricular activities like band and choir or drama. Maybe that's where it has to focus, but we need more data. Um, and going forward, you know, if we're going to be doing a lot of testing, Doing testing takes a lot of resource and a lot of work. I know we, we don't have the science yet to say it's, it's worth the bang for the buck. And I think that's what we're trying to get at.